Okay, so let's review this. Remember, we said that this is basically the marginal probability distribution of x, and we can take the joint probability function, and we can um, um, sum it over y, and that will give us uh, the probability distribution for x. Okay, let's return to conditional probability. And we want to bring this concept into the realm of random variables also. So remember that um, when we're talking about conditional probability, the word given always comes into the question, or the concept of given. So let's read this. In the example of tossing three coins, we might wish to know the probability of various number of heads given one change in sequence. And in general, it is often of interest to know the probability distribution of x when y is given. So remember, y was the number of runs. And let's suppose that y is known to be 1. So we can say given y is equal to 1. And now we might ask, what is the conditional probability distribution of x given that y is equal to 1. And we could write that as the probability of x given x, uh, y is equal to 1. So generally speaking, we could say, when we say given that y is equal to 1, we're only talking about this slice of the whole sample space. So we sort of reduce the sample space just to this. And then given that this is the sample space, what is the probability distribution of x. So given this whole sample space, what is the probability that x equals 0? So that's these dots out of the entire set here. Or what's the probability that x equals 1? It's these, uh, these dots given the entire set here, and so on. So this is what we're asking for. The prob we want the probability distribution of x given that, well, sorry, the prob probability distribution of x, given that y equals 1, and we can see what it is. It's This is the sample space, so we have to put the probability of y on the bottom to mean that sample space, divided by this. So what is this? This is our joint probability distribution function. And then if we want to write it in general what we mean by the probability distribution of x given y in general, then we're just going to have equals. And then instead of y here, y equals 1 here, we're just going to have y in general. And instead of y equals 1 here, we're just going to have y in general. So we're going to have this. So the probability uh, distribution of x given y equals y or just x given y is the probability is the joint probability distribution divided by the marginal probability distribution marginal of y like this and of course this is very similar to the original definition of um, conditional probability and next we could ask well what is this the expected value of x given y equals y. What does that mean? Well, graphically it means that we have, um, this is our sample space, and we want to know the distribution, the expected value of x, given that we're stuck in this green. So what's the expected value of x? So it's going to be something. It's going to be, you know, sometimes x is equal to zero, sometimes it's equal to one, Sometimes it's equal to 2, and whatever goes down to the end. And the expected value is somewhere in, in the middle somewhere. So that's what this is asking for. And we could just write the expected value of x given y. But that's what it's asking for. And we can also write it this way, uh, because we can use mu instead of the expected value. We can also use mu. It's just a different notation for the same idea. And that means we have to take each x and um, 
multiply it by its uh, probability, but which probability? Not all, not just, not uh, p of x or p of x comma y or, or any of those. It's only, we have to weight it by what? Not in general, what's the um, uh, weight, what's the probability that x equals 0 or x equals 1? Not that general probability, but the probability that x equals 0 when we're in here. So what is that? How do we write that? The probability of um, that x, e the probability of x given y. So that's what we have to weight it by. So we have to take each value of x and weight it by the appropriate probability, and this is the appropriate probability. So that's what the expected um, value of x given y is. It's the sum of all of those x's, and basically it's going to give you some x value in the middle, like I said, of of here, like it might be here, in other words, it might be x equals 3 or x equals 4. Anyway, it's somewhere like in the middle here. Well, I can't really say the middle because it depends really on the probability distribution of all these, of all of this one and this one and this one and so on, but we'll just say it's in the middle. So anyway, we just want to be able actually to, to say the expect, we just want to be able to write that the expected value of x given y. So we just want to have an idea of what that means. And also we actually have the calculation for it here. So we've talked about what we meant by the conditional probability of x given y here. So what follows usually is um, when x and y are independent as variables, as random variables. Now actually we've already talked about this, but I'm just kind of repeating it now with uh, the concept of give, uh, that we have conditional independent, I'm sorry, we have um, conditional probability. But recall that we already talked about this, we already know sort of the answer in terms of the table. We saw that if one row is a multiple of, if every row is a multiple of every other row, or if every column is a multiple of every other column, then we will have conditional independence, and otherwise we won't. But we want to talk about it now in terms of this, um, we want to use conditional probability as well. Okay, anyway, so here we have two random variables, x and y, are called independent. If for every x and y, for e remember, we stressed this before, if for every possible pair of x and y, the events x equals x and y equals y are independent. So we said that's a big statement. Now, and we saw this before also, this is the definition of uh, independent random variables x and y. So now they're going back to the um, dice, or we could go back to the um, a uh, number of girls, but this is dice. So um, they say, returning to our example, we can easily show that x and y are not independent. For independence, this has to hold for every combination. We ask whether it holds, for example, when x equals 0 and y equals 0. So what does that mean? Um, this, I think, means no heads, and this means no... Um, what is that? All right, I don't know what y is. It's not the number of runs. Okay, this is a little different. It's the number of changes of the sequence. So um, we, in this case, y can be equal to zero if we have like heads, 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 the way they've defined it here, which is different than we did it before. Um, we defined it as the number of runs, but now they're saying the number of changes in the sequence. Well, there's no change here. So in terms of the number of runs, we called this one. But in terms of the number of changes of sequence, we'd call it zero. So when x equals zero, the um, number of, let's say, tails equals zero, or could be number of heads equals zero, and uh, y equals one, uh, zero, sorry. So y equals zero is either this or this, and that's all. So that's two out of eight 
And x equals 0, though, is, uh, let's say this is the number of heads, there's only 1, so it's 1 eighth times 2 eighths. Okay, that's uh, this side here. So this side gives us this calculation here. But this side, the probability that x is 0 and y is 0, there's only one case of that, and that's 1 eighth. So we get 1 eighth on the left side, and we get this on the right side, they're not equal. So this is not equal to that, uh, even for this one case. Remember, that's enough to throw out um, the uh, independence of the two random variables. On the other hand, uh, we could take this as uh, the distribution of x and y, joint distribution, and it looks like these are all, well, this is uh, this is one and a half times this, this is one and a half times this, this is one and a half times this, and I guess these are all um, proportional to each other. So it looks like from our knowledge of um, the proportionality of the row of the rows, we can uh, say that these are going to be, these two are going to be independent. Okay, we are going to stop here, but I just want to alert you to the fact that there are some other topics to cover. So um, here, the next thing they cover is functions of two random variables. So we have a random variable x and y. We've just been talking about that. But some function of those two random variables called t. And um, what can we say about um, t if we have knowledge about x and y as random variables? So we're not going to cover that, though. But here's a function of x and y, just their sum. And what can we say about s in that case? And then if uh, t is just any function of x and y, what can we say about the expected value of t? Um, maybe we can say something about it if we know the um, probability, the joint, joint probability of x and y. Maybe we can make some statement about the expected value of t. So this actually answers it, but again, we're not going to go into the detail. And then with that um, information, then we can talk about covariance, because covariance is um, a function of um, two random variables, like we have two, a random variable x and the random variable y, and we want to know about the like the co correlation between them, or what we call the covariance. Um, it's going to be this product, which we want to consider, and this is clearly a function of x and y. You have to think of this as like a constant, and this is like a constant, so it's clearly a function of x and y anyway. So with, once we're armed with the previous knowledge of, from the previous section, we can discuss this in a nice way, in a convenient way, but we're not going to do that either. But we'll just mention one thing. If x and y are independent, then the covariance of x and y, that's what this stands for, equals 0. Or that also will mean that the correlation will be 0. So if x and y are independent, they will not, they'll have no correlation. So that kind of makes sense in terms of you know what we think of when we say independent and um, no correlation. But notice this is the reverse of this, or what we call the converse of this. It's not necessarily true. In other words, just because this is equal to zero does not mean that x and y are independent. That's not what this theorem says, at least. It says if x and y are independent, then this, this is the covariance, or you could, and that will also mean that the correlation is zero. But going backwards, it's not necessarily. And then the last section here, um, is if we have a linear combination of two random variables. So we just talked above if we have a function of x and y, but now we're not just talking about any old function, but being very specific, if we have what we call a linear combination, what can we say then? We already said in general what, that we can make certain statements if we just have any function, but what if we have specifically a... Um, a linear combination, maybe we can say even more precise things then 
because we're specifying very precisely what kind of function of x and y we're talking about. And one thing that you can say is that the expected value of that is equal to this, but again, we're not going to cover that. And also um, this statement, but we're not going to cover that either. And finally, this statement. So the variance of this linear combination of x and y is equal to the variance of y x plus the variance of y plus 2 times. So this is some other theorem that we're not going to cover. So if you want to, you can go in and read this and go through it. It should make sense, but we're not going to do it. And then that leaves that to um, sort of the first chapter in this book about statistics, because um, we this before that was probability, but now they shift to uh, statistics. And the first topic in statistics is sampling. So it means you know you have a big population, and it's too big to um, to check all of the individuals in the population, so you take a sample, and then you try and make a guess about something in the population based on, so like you, you might mm, want to guess the height of all the people in the population, but there's, let's say, there's 300 million people here, you can't measure everybody, so you just take a sample, maybe even as, let's say we only take a sample of size n equals 100, we can certainly measure the weights of a hundred people, and we'll get a uh, and we'll get a number. Um, we'll call that number x bar, and we'll and then. But what we really want is to know is the um, mean weight of the everyone in among the 300, 300 million people, and this will just be, of course, just a guess or just an estimate of what this is. But that's called sampling. Okay, so that's all of the probability, at least for now.